And welcome back to the Pulse with Willie and Al. How's it going today, brother? How you doing? Uh, I'm, I think I'm doing better than you are today. We'll get, mm. we'll dive into that. But uh, yeah, I'm doing all right. I'm doing yeah. all right. Of course, I'm all smiles at the beginning of the episode. But yeah, that's yeah. Uh, it's about to get real deep and dark. So um, today we are bringing you our 45th episode, and this is our hand me my fifth episode so uh a major reason for that is my atlanta braves but listen before we delve too deep into the depression zone uh smash that subscribe button go ahead and like the video and uh let's let's get into the dirt first here man um uh, my atlanta braves uh the hits just keep on coming right spencer strider was not enough to satisfy the baseball gods Never so is. uh and uh let, let's just take it back to early this morning late last night for you um i uh i thought i was having a nightmare when you texted me but it really uh, i woke up this morning and confirmed not only was it not a nightmare and it was true but uh i spelled every word wrong that i had texted you back so uh <laughs> looks like i thought either you were sleeping or you were drunk and i couldn't tell which i couldn't tell which yeah i mean Either was hilarious to me. Yeah, like, I mean, so. it, it would have been wild today at school, but no, that, that would not have been a good one. So, uh, but for those that don't know what we're talking about, uh, Ronald Acuna Jr. Uh, unfortunately tore his ACL in his other knee and not, um, I don't know if this makes me feel better or not, but it was on a non-contact play. Uh, essentially, yeah. he was kind of a stutter step uh, to, to be able to, to steal a base and it just uh, didn't end up well at all so just kind of feel bad for him and feel bad for the team feel bad for the fans but basically him and his family i know he was looking to try to score a new contract uh in this coming off season and that might prove a little difficult with um you know th this situation now so uh just kind of curious like what you think this means for the team and and how you see this kind of playing out uh, to, well, let me back it up yesterday. So we're recording this on a Monday on uh, in the United States. It's Memorial Day. Mm -hmm. uh, I was like, I wasn't feeling well yesterday. So I was like, uh, you know what? I'm just going to like stay in. I'm going to just watch some day baseball. I tuned, I like turn up, turn on MLB TV. I'm like, oh, the Braves are playing sick. Uh, and I'm like, well, I'll watch the Braves. Five minutes later, Acuna uh, blows out his knee. And I was like, I couldn't have done the Homer Simpson back into the bush fast enough. Yeah. And I was like, well, it's the last Braves game I'll watch this year. My apologies. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that being said, I, I think he's still going to get paid. Really? And it's Atlanta. And it's Atlanta so they're going to do the thing where they pay him, like, uh, give him a nine-year contract for, like, $90. And, like, it's going to be fine. Like, okay. he's going to get paid. Okay. He is. I hope so. I don't want to see him leave and stuff. And I hope they kind of learn their lesson from Freddie Freeman. Uh, even though Matt Olson has been pretty good. Not not great this year, but he was good last year. I just, uh, I don't want to see a guy like Acuna be playing for another team. Uh, especially someone like the Phillies or Mets or, you know, anyone like, like that. Like, it's not going to be what he thought it was going to be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I will, Brian, I, I... I feel bad saying this but you have to look at the positive right and i just want to remind you like of the last time this went down right the braves went on to win the world series uh yeah. i mean both sale and freed are pitching very well and they, they also had spencer strider though didn't they in 2021 they, they did um okay no they didn't no, when they, they no, when they won I, the World Series. Like, it was twenty, yeah, twenty twenty one. Yeah, they did not have Spencer Strider that year. Uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, they they got a, a good opportunity to still be able to put a good lineup out there, and this lineup's not going to be an easy out against teams that no. like they have been. But I'm hoping you know next man up mentality, and and the Braves are going to be able to figure it out. Uh, Anthopoulos, he likes to make moves, so we'll see what yeah. what happens with that. But uh, just curious, like your thoughts on like how this affects 
um, and how this kind of helps the Dodgers and Phillies now going forward. Well, it's not going to help the Dodgers because they'll get eliminated in the first round in the playoffs. They always do. Like, <laughs> we don't have to worry about that. Um, the Phillies, though, that's kind of – that's. I'm not going to say they have to. They don't have to worry about Atlanta, but, like, they don't have to worry about them as much because Acuna, like, say what you want. Like, that dude was a top of the table. Like, for leadoff hitters, like, best in the league, like – not many leadoff hitters win MVP awards. Like that's just really hard to do. Mm-hmm. And like, he was just one of the best at what he was doing. He was having a slow start to the season this year, but like he was showing flashes of getting that back. And then it's just, that's a really tough way to go, man. And especially when I was watching the game, it just like cut to them real quick. And like the moment they said non-contact injury, I was like, ah, boy, like you fear it's one of, when they say that it's one of two things either an ACL or it's an Achilles. Yeah. And to be honest with you, thankful it's the ACL. Yeah. It's medicine these days. Like he'll, he'll probably come back at the start of spring training next year, ready to go. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's kind of what I'm hoping for. That's what we're looking at in terms of the timetable uh, about a year. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens, but wish him, uh, good health going forward. But yeah. uh, this one, uh, you know, let's jump into the Phillies real quick because, you know, while we're talking about the NL East, like they're, they clearly have the best record in baseball right now, but are they the best team? Because there's a lot of times, and I know this happens in football, it's a little less volatile, I think you could say, in football, where if you have a good record in football, there's a good chance that you're a good team. Uh, but in baseball, we've been through 50 games so far, just about, uh, and the Phillies have the best record in baseball. So, like, are, are they really the best team right now through two months in? Or, uh, you know, is, is there something we are missing on this? Uh, to be honest with you, top to bottom, they kind of are. Like, hitting, I mean, like, they Trey Turner is currently on the IL, and he's, like, probably their best hitter mm-hmm. besides Bryce Harper. Um and then you just like look at that starting rotation, man. It's it's Suarez, Nola, and Wheeler. Like yeah. that's for for a one, two, three. That's as solid as you can get. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's that'll really bode well in a seven game series. Come you know, come October. Um, and then their bullpen, their bullpen has been their bullpen has been better. It has been addition by subtraction with getting rid of Craig Kimbrell. Mm-hmm. So you remember last year in the NLCS, Craig Kimbrell cost them two games in that NLCS. And like, when really, realistically, they should have smashed Arizona. Mm-hmm. And they they probably would have smashed Texas as well. Like, no offense. Like, that that <laughs> Texas pitching was, was not great. Um, so, yeah, their, their bullpen is still a little bit of a question mark on the on, – you know, like that sixth, seventh inning guys, like they have guys like Dominguez, like Gregory Soto, their ERAs aren't great. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I think that's like their relievers are a dime a dozen in the majors. And I think that's an easy fix at the trade deadline too. So I'm not super worried about them. Yeah. It's, um, you know, and I, I'm just looking here, like Suarez just took his first loss. Right. Um, yeah. But he, like we were talking about before, he had a chance to be a 10 game winner before July. And that's, Kind of wild to be able to do that. You get 10 yeah. quality starts, and granted, quality has very different definitions as you go through it in terms of baseball. But guy can go out there and get almost 10 wins before June. They're putting you in good position. That's a third of the games they've won already, you know, yeah. just, just, just about. So um, they're also getting like the Phillies are also doing this thing this year. So they're one through three, like everybody's talking about, but mm-hmm. like they're getting these like we. Like Tajon Walker and Spencer Turnbull. Spencer Turnbull is like a career, like I think his career record is like fourteen and twenty nine, and he's like three and zero for them this year. Like yeah. he's like pitched well for them. It um, matters, right? Like it. Yeah, it definitely does. Uh, and, and I mean, tell me, you wouldn't want to be a pitcher going out there for this lineup either, when when you yeah. know you've got guys like Bryce Harper out there just trying to 
you know, smash, you know, hit the crap out of the ball. It really does feel good to be able to go out there and, and feel comfortable on the mound because, you know, even what made me think of it was Bryce Harper gets thrown out the other day, but he says, you know, like I was just disappointed because it was early in Denver and like, you know, I could have hit a double or a home run and like we could have won that game, you know, yeah. like it just, and he knows that he believes in himself to know that that's within my abilities easily to be able to do that. Um, yeah. Just I, one thing to watch out with the Phillies, though, is while Jose Alvarado has been pretty good for them, he kind of fucks around more than you want to for a closer. Mm -hmm. Like, there's always seems like there's a guy on base when he's trying to close out a game. And I, and like his ERA is like 3.63, which like isn't wonderful for a closer, but like he's getting the job done. But mm -hmm. like, but he's risky in doing so. Yeah, yeah, just just kind of something to look out for. I feel like Chris Rock said that once, right? Like it's you know, it can be done, but it's it's not meant to be done that way, right? Like, yeah, uh, yeah it, it ultimately doesn't matter if they're going to keep smashing teams ten three in games. Yeah, like, yeah, it doesn't matter. Like mm -hmm. that run but, differential is huge right now, and that's that's a big uh, component to their their ability to win at games. Some point, at some point in the playoffs, though. It's got to get tight. It always does. And then, like, that's when you kind of find out, like, what you have with your closer. Like, right. Well, one thing I wanted to mention, because I know you were talking about the Dodgers having an early exit and stuff, and you had mentioned about Acuna, like, how difficult it is to be a leadoff MVP. Like, Otani's in position to be able to do that. You know? Okay, so yeah. he's – right now, it's him and Mookie Betts at the top of the batting title. I think it was the 336, 335, both of them, uh, neck and neck for that. And it's just – to have two guys on your team that are hitting that well, um, it's kind of incredible. I mean, Otani got a couple of hits yesterday, and that was him busting out of an in the and I busting in quotations out of an O for ten slump. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It just yeah, it's it's just it's just wild right now. Like, yeah. so, and I feel like to see him push closer to four hundred would not be unreasonable to expect. Uh, to see him have the ability to do that. So uh, one thing that I, I wanted to make sure, one team I want to make sure that we mention, uh, and this is you know going to get get some of our fans a little giddy. Uh, the, I think the Tigers need to be mentioned, right? <laughs> it's just... Not for good reasons, but okay. Yeah, but so l listen, like, I just, it's kind of interesting what they were able to do. So they blew a five-run lead, which I know my dad would say like, yep, that's good old Detroit Tiger baseball, right? Like... They did that, but then they rally in the bottom of the ninth, and they have the three three run uh, walk off home run to be able to win that game. And I just the reason I want to bring them up is because <laughs> they're only one game back from your socks. So <laughs> yeah, I know I know you're not having big aspirations for your team this year, but I think it's kind of interesting, you know. And I look, you know, they're ten games back in the division. I'm not confident that they're going to be winning the division this year or anything like that, but. I just think this division in general is is kind of uh, an anomaly from the others as as I look at it because you have two very surprising teams now. Uh, Cleveland, I know they they're good and they've got a good good lineup, good rotation and stuff. But Kansas City being there, I I feel like is a bit of a surprise. But I do want to point out that when we did our preseason, you had mentioned this team and said, "Listen, do not be shocked." if they are in this position. And here we are a third of the way through the season. They're here. What do you have to say about them? Uh, well, I think Kansas City just, they got a lot of guys that were like, are just competitors. Like uh, they, <clears throat> they had a lot of signings that, that announced to the major, like, Hey, we might not have the b most talented team in the league, but we're going to grind. And like, we're going to like make you work for these wins. And like, and the Royals aren't half bad this year. Like the AL Central the last couple of years has been what I like to call a division where, well, somebody has to win this yeah. legally. So who's it going to be? It's, <laughs> it's true. It is it's, true. It, it like is if true. you look at that division, it's like, I think that, I think it's what Cleveland's in first right now. Mm -hmm. You look at that lineup. It's not a good lineup. It's Jose Ramirez and a bunch of dudes. Yeah, but, uh, I mean, in Can the thing is, Kansas City's not far behind that. Like, Kansas City's just a bunch of dudes. Yeah. Like, 
Like, yeah, they it's... what they have, what they really have is a really good bullpen. And, like, decent starting pitching, which is, yeah, which is kind of, kind of really helping them right now. Like, I don't know if this is sustainable, but, like, I think they're going to hang around longer because they're in the AL Central. That division's that division, I think, is going to be one of those ones where I think 84, 85 games wins you the division. Yeah, which is just barely above 500, you know. Um, yeah. As, as you look at it. So, yeah, but it, it will, you know, we'll, we'll have a chance to be able to kind of dig in more and, and kind of see what happens over the summer because those those months, the next three months, right, June, July, August, those are that's going to tell us a lot uh, as to what's going to happen with, with these teams. Um, also, if you were going to watch the Royals for one thing, uh, Sally Perez, who's their catcher, who's like a big, like he's a chubby dude, and I, I'm a big fan of, of chubby baseball players in general. Uh, <laughs> and Sally Perez, man, is just absolutely murdering the ball right now. <laughs> like he's hitting 325 for a catcher, which is unheard of. That is unheard of. Yeah. So that and is they got, a... Bobby, they got Bobby Witt Jr., they got Hunter Renfro. Like they just have a bunch of dudes. Like Hunter Renfro is hitting a buck 60, but at least like, gives you solid outfield defense. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. You, you know, I, I didn't put anything down in the notes about it, but I, I got to ask you too about them just because they it's been kind of running through my head during the day. Um, and I'm kind of going back on back and forth on which team I'm, I'm higher on in, in the AL East when you think about New York and Baltimore. Um, sorry, not your boys, but, uh, no, no, but, but between the two of them, uh, because I, I know it's close. Um, I'm just curious as to which team you think has the sustainability to be able to make it through the season, uh, unscathed, you know, in- injuries, you, we obviously can't predict those, but which team do you think has enough gas to be able to get there at the end? Maybe better coaching, wh- whatever it is that you, you feel about those two teams. I think all around, I think it's Baltimore. I think they have better pitching, deeper lineup, uh, it, with the Yankees, like, the problem is, like, having Soto and Judge is great. That's fantastic. They're great power hitters. But, like, after that, you look at that lineup, like, it's it's pretty barren, man. Like, and, and, they're, and the Yankees pitching is is not good. Like, like, they don't even have Garrett Cole back yet. And he hasn't even played a, pitched an inning this season. I, I just am curious, like that you can only do that for so long, right? And granted, Judge has been really hot in the month of May. Like he's just been absolutely tattooing the ball, but like it's just not sustainable. Whereas with Baltimore, I think there's a better infrastructure in place, um, and they have a farm system which they can they can easily kind of dip into to either a make a move at the deadline or just call up and you know try to get some depth i know the jackson holiday thing didn't work out Mm -hmm. but i i'm under the belief that he was called up too soon and i think that he's still a really good player i just i think he needed more seasoning in the minors and i think yeah so yeah that's and i mean you never know until some of these guys come up how they're going to react how they're going to play once you know once they're under the big lights so that's kind of a a big thing yeah Mm-hmm. Now, the thing that worries me with Baltimore, mm-hmm. remember how we just talked about with Philadelphia, where it's subtra- addition by subtraction with Craig Kimbrell? Yeah. Craig Kimbrell is Baltimore's closer. Just needs to be said. Just needs to be said. <laughs> I've watched I've watched that story with Boston for a few years. Like, it's maddening. Okay. So Something we're yeah. going to have to keep an eye on. Like I said, over the next three months is going to be a real good indication of who these teams are as they kind of mold into exactly who they're who they're meant to be, I guess. Um, yeah. any other stories in baseball you wanted to cover before we, we, we touch on the NFL here? We talked about the Royals real quick. I just kind of want to shout out Seth Lugo dude that like, hasn't like ever pitched really well is currently eight and one for the Royals, man, with an ERA of under two. That's like, big. I think he's going to be, an, he's probably going to be an all-star. And I honestly, like, I love that for him. So yeah, yeah. it's yeah. really cool when you see guys that haven't performed or maybe like, and I don't think it gets said enough because people just look at stats and they're like, oh, this guy's record is this or, you know, the same thing in football, right? Like, oh, this guy had had drops here. Like, there's so many factors that go into 
determining someone's production and possibility to acquire stats. Right. Yeah. And I, I think, I don't know, like even like one, one of the best examples I could think of was from years ago with Felix Hernandez, right. Being able to, to p- pitch for the, the Mariners and stuff. When, when you look at that, it's like, okay, well, uh, you know, he had a, you, people look at his record. They're like, he never should have won the Cy Young. I don't know, man, like lo- looking at who you you have to take a lot of factors into consideration when you're making those decisions. You can't just judge something through one lens and say, all right, this guy's good or this guy's bad based on this. Right. Yeah. Um, also, Seth Lugo, his career high in wins was last year with the Padres at eight. He's already at eight this year. Hey, that's so, pretty good then. Good on him, man. Good, Yeah, good. Good, him. good for him. Definitely. So. Um, and we'll, you know, hopefully we'll be able to see him. Make sure you get out there and vote for the All Stars when, uh, when it's time. We're rolling in on that. What in a, in about yeah. a month, man? Like the the voting's yeah. got to start. What in the next two weeks? At yeah, least? it starts pretty soon. Uh, yeah, it's the middle of July uh, in Texas this year. Is oh the, wow, uh, the All Star game. It's yep. going to be nice and hot there for everyone. So, oh, they played a dome. It's a retractable. They oh, close the dome. I, I, I still, it's still hot in Texas in summer, right? Yeah. Now. <laughs> so, yeah. all right. So moving into the NFL, uh, there is not much going on, but uh, they do have OTAs going right now, uh, which is kind of interesting because you're starting to see some of these guys coverage on them, right? Caleb Williams, Bo Nix, uh, talking about these guys. There's already, oh, okay, Bo Nix is going to be the starter over Zach Wilson, all of this stuff. But um, I, I think it's kind of interesting because you're seeing some of these guys finally get out there, right? The drafts happen, all that BS to the side. You know, most of them have signed their deals. Now it's, hey, get out there and let's see what you can start doing. Let's get to work. Um, but one guy that showed up to OTAs was a little bit lighter than we last expected, uh, you know, or last saw him last year, right? Uh, Lamar Jackson showed up looking felt. I don't know if you saw him. Yeah. Uh, I. What are your thoughts on that? Um, <laughs> I, I didn't realize that Lamar Jackson thought he needed to get faster, which <laughs> the dude is already fast. Yeah. Like, I don't like cool. He's going to be faster, which means like nobody really had a shot of catching him anyway. And now like, now for sure nobody can catch him what does worry me though is like he's one good hit from from being injured like that's he kind of got rid of some muscle that i was like i don't know man like (laughs) you you know what it reminded me of did you see the movie ford versus ferrari yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember when they start stripping stuff out of the car and they're like, oh, yeah, don't need this. Don't need this. This is too heavy. That's what Man. I kind of felt like. He was like, oh, yeah, don't need this trap muscle anymore. Just rip that off. Yeah. Like, you know, let, let's slim down on this. Right. And it, I, I don't know. I, I feel like he is going to be lightning fast this year. I feel like it has the makings of a great season for him with what they've done in terms of bringing Derrick Henry in there. Uh, yeah. And I feel like he's his job, he knows his role, is to shoulder the load from Lamar. And Lamar understands that. You hear him talking in press conferences already, and he's like, yo, this guy is, he, he's a beast. Like, it's great that he's here because not only is he going to protect me, but, you know, it's his job to carry the ball 30 times a game. It's not mine. So it's it's nice that he's trimmed down. I think it's going to make him more elusive. I hope we don't look, uh, I hope we don't end up in a situation where he does get hurt because he's someone that even if he doesn't play for your team, you enjoy watching him play on Sunday, uh, and or Monday nights or Thursday nights or Saturday, whatever day they're playing now. But, uh, it just, for me, I hope he's able to stay healthy all season. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I, it, because we've seen this team when Lamar Jackson's not the quarterback and he's hurt and it looks a lot different. And it's yeah. not, it's not pretty. Like, I remember what two seasons ago in the playoffs going into it. And they're like, Oh yeah, Huntley's going to be the guy. And it's like, they're like, don't worry. He's just like him. And I'm like, well, just like him is not just like him. Right. Like yeah, nobody, nobody's just like Lamar Jackson. <laughs> yeah. Not at all. Like, yeah. Yeah. Well, speaking of someone who is not like anybody else, uh, and I I think this probably has some something to do with how his father 
kind of raised him and how he brought him up. But Marvin Harrison Jr., he finally inks his deal with the Cardinals, um, which is kind of interesting because there's been this news swirling about NIL and uh, what what he signed with, what was it, Fan, FanDuel? What, I'm trying to think Fanatic. of it. Fanatics, yeah. And Fanatics, yeah. So, so you look at that and like kind of that deals under the microscope now and they're kind of exposing this on like how they're preying on some of these college kids. And from my understanding, they basically own them for two years in the NFL, which yeah. is just outlandish to me. Like it should be like, no, you're going to own me through the end of college. And then after that, I'm going to go make my own money, which you are not entitled to. So yeah. With this, there's been a lot of talk on that, but I just was kind of curious your perspective on that and, and how you felt about it. I did a, a little bit of searching on guys and how much they're making in NIL, and it's it's outrageous some of the money these kids are able to take in. Honestly, I, I'm here for it um, because the NCAA has taken advantage of these kids for so long under the guise of like giving them an education, which is like great, but like these schools are making millions on millions of dollars off these guys while like they're not allowed to accept $10 from somebody. Like I'm all for it. Mm -hmm. Like pay them. Like, well, yeah, it doesn't change the landscape of recruiting. Sure. It does. But like, I don't know, like get that back because especially in football, you don't know when your last play is going to be. Yeah. I, and I, I get, I guess I feel differently about football than maybe some of the other sports. Um, but I definitely feel that way. I, I've got no issue with them getting paid to play, especially when you look at some of these, you know, you turn uh, tune in on Saturday and you see the Rose Bowl game or, okay, it's not on Saturdays, usually on Monday, but wh whatever, right? Like you're turning into these bowl games and they have 120,000 people in the stadium. And you're just thinking to yourself like, oh, the amount of money, even if they charge $1 per person, the school's getting rich off that, right? Yep. And it's clearly not that. It's much more expensive than that. There's the concessions that go into it, the apparel they sell, everything like that off of these players' namesakes. And it's just not, uh, it doesn't leave you with a good feeling afterwards. And I know it, it happened years ago uh, and the previous generations. Unfortunately, you can't go back and retroactively take care of them. Uh, but I feel like we're starting to understand that, especially with Reggie Bush getting the Heisman back. And like, you know, that that was a big piece that needed to happen. Uh, him getting I was that just trophy back. That. Yeah. Like, I'm so glad. I've been barking up that tree for years that Reggie Bush should have gotten his Heisman back. And, mm -hmm. like, I, what's so funny is, like, Johnny Manziel was the guy. Like, yeah, he I, was the I, guy. Like, yeah. That was like, hey, like, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to show up anymore until you guys get back the Heisman. And, like, he kind of started something. And I think that, like, finally pushed the needle for the NCAA to be like, you know what? This is dumb. You're right. Like we shouldn't have taken it away in the first place. Like, yeah. The the one so. thing I, I did like is, and like you heard people come out and say, like, even as I listened to Ryan Clark and Channing, uh, Channing Crowder talk and stuff. And he's like, Oh dude, we were accepting stuff all the time. Like they're yeah. not going to go back and prosecute those guys. Right. I, I don't know if Ryan Clark was saying that, but I definitely heard Channing Crowder say that. But I, I just think back, like the one thing I like about it is Reggie Bush didn't go and roll on anybody to when when he got caught right like he didn't turn around and point the finger at somebody else he just said man i think this is really unfair that this is happening to me and he bided his time right and was able to to be able to get it back and i just i'm very happy that it's back in his hands he was an absolute pleasure to watch in college he was a you know a pleasure to watch while we had him in the nfl uh, and you realize he moved around a little bit too he had an impact on quite a few different teams uh, with, yeah, with not... Detroit, New Orleans, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It just, yeah. I know he was part of that big hit uh, uh, against the Eagles that time. Remember that? Uh, yeah, it, it wasn't Troy Vincent. Who was it that ended up hitting him? It was a, it was a smack hit, and I'm like, oh man, that is, that's rough. It's and you just that. see him like a flying like backwards in a way that you're like, I, I think he might be dead. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was very very tough. So um, he and that was part of the jacked up era, right? It was Sheldon Brown. Yeah. That's who it is. Yeah, Sheldon Brown. I was just so, looking that up. Yeah, but I'm gonna, I'm, when we're done recording, I'm gonna immediately watch this because like it's it's real good, right? I've yeah. already seen stills of it, and like it's already. It was it, actually like, in the movie Concussion too, if you it remember. Was, like yeah. they had those clips of jacked up, which 
I'll be honest, until I learned about the effects of that, I loved that show, man. That was that was so much fun. I, the first time I heard it come on, I was like, man, this is a great show. Gets yeah. me all it gets me jacked up feeling it. So uh anyhow, uh we will go ahead and wrap up. We should have more next week, maybe on the NFL, some good news and stuff. Uh dipping into the fantasy waters coming up here within the next few months. You just sent me the invite today for the guillotine league. And yeah, I'm already yeah. I'm already excited. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So we're really we're getting things going. We're excited about it. Um, some great, you know, it should be a great summer with some fantasy football, some great baseball stuff too. Uh, but let's wrap up. We got a trivia question. Uh, the, the one we had last week was Rafi Devers. Um, and uh, did he make it to, to seven? I don't think so. Right. No. Yes. No, he, the next game he immediately did not know. Yeah. So six straight games, he had a home run. And the question was who holds the record for, uh, homers in consecutive games. So, and those were, yeah, so it's, it's, it's three people. It was Dale Long in 56, mm-hmm. um, Mattingly in 87, mm-hmm. and then, uh, Griffey in 93, Ken Griffey Jr. Yeah. Which is crazy. I, I, I don't yeah. think people fully appreciate how good Ken Griffey Jr. was. Yeah. Like just a supreme athlete. Like even, uh, we were sending videos on that the other day about, uh, um, Mookie Betts, like people yeah. not realizing like what an what it what an elite athlete he is in multiple sports you know it's i don't know it's wild mookie Betts, state champion in bowling fun fact yeah when he was younger yeah <sighs> crazy wild. um well the new question that we have is with your guy and our guy and the roasted guy right <laughs> uh yeah. mi- mr tom brady so go ahead you can ask it uh tom brady uh has crushed a lot of people's hopes and dreams over the years. Uh, but there is one team where he does not have a career winning record against. Who is that team? And I'll give you a hint. It's probably not Miami. It's probably not Buffalo. And it's probably not the Jets. <laughs> so, uh, you know, this is actually a good time real quick. I, I do want to have a PSA real quick. Yeah. Um, fuck the Jets. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. There we go. All right. Well, um, I don't, I don't have any hatred towards the Jets, so um, send your hate to him, uh, yeah. not me, not me. So, um, other than that, man, great episode this week. I know we will be back next week uh, to be able to give you some more content and stuff. But really appreciate you guys tuning in. Thank you so much, and uh, yeah, we will be back again next week. All right, man. All right, love you, brother. Peace. Peace.